Black Acre Ranch. It's a beautiful Saturday, enjoying this beautiful weather. Probably about time to take my hoodie off though. We've got a little fencing project. I've already done my repairs. The bison are chilling over there. We fed them already. They're enjoying their beautiful morning. And this, this project we've been thinking of for a while, but it's time to get it done. So let's see what's on the agenda for today. All right, first line. Just like that. Keep your head this way, okay? It's just gonna snap on you. Here, I'll hold There. All right, so once we get the barbed wire off, then we can work on the brace wire. One baby step at a time. So you set up a lot of H braces in your day, Bradshaw? I actually have not these kind though. I was say, do you ever use the like post thing like that? Um no, we always used to just, you can hook a wire. Uh-huh. And you just hook, hook on a drill, and you can do it. But oh. that's actually cool. Like, yeah, you got your... There's so many, so many ways to do it. Um, when we hired this out, this part was done by somebody else. That's how he did it. But when we did our own fencing, we did it a different way. So... Yeah, there's so many ways. It's crazy. Did you just learn by home, or...? Oh, no. Like, seriously, YouTube has all the answers. <laughs> So today we're working on this fencing here. It's back to another fencing product project. It never ends, right? What we're working on here, we've got the elders with us <clears throat> and they're helping us tear down this section. This behind me is the feed lot. That's between pasture six and seven. So pasture six, pasture seven's over there. And this is kind of a centralized feed spot. You know, of course, this is where we put our feed troughs. We can put all the uh, supplement, whether it be cubes, loose supplement. We can put the minerals. And the advantage of that has always been that, well, we don't have to have double of everything, right? It's a shared space, so they can have access from either pasture, save some money, resources, that kind of stuff. This fence you can see is already slack. It was slack before. Uh, you've seen the elders taking everything off over there. This tree right here is right next to our house. This tree, when we brought it down, fell on that fence. And we knew, well, we're gonna have to wanna do this all over again anyway, because the disadvantages, okay? So really right here is there is this fence on the north side. There is no gate for a man to get through at all, except the one way down there by the pigs past the shed. And otherwise there is no gate at all. And so it's been very frustrating. So we're gonna take this opportunity to put a gate on this fence. We're also opening this up because there's no way for the animals to get from the gathering pen here for the handling facility to get directly into this feed spot and pasture seven without having to go through pasture six over here. So what we're gonna do is kind of define a gate right where the elders are sitting right there and we're gonna make an opening. And that's gonna allow us to be able to go straight from this feed spot all the way over to the pens there and not have to worry about going through pasture six. So it gets a little bit more flexibility, but in the meantime, we're gonna throw in a man gate. All right, so we uh, habitually get good workers here. I oh, know there's been some slackers actually. So we've got Lewis. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Lewis is a good guy. And then Bradshaw, he just came from ranching. So he knows what he's doing and that's nice actually. So lots of good guys, good helpers. Right now we're just gonna kind of put this wire together and we're just gonna leave it as much as possible connected because we're gonna come off that post and come over we want a 14 foot gate. I think that's what the other one is. We and we're gonna just redo the posts over here. I think we're 14 foot. We got the horn. How's your boot? foot and then what like a four foot I and mean, that would be great so that'd be to 18. Oh. 
this a little bit more. And then we'll need what, nine. So this T post will probably be gone. The Clark is going to unhook the T clips, then we'll bring it in one more row. It'll be fine. You want to know the good news, Lewis? What's I up? You noticed that when you were digging posts. Oh, normally it'd have been. All right, I think we're gonna make a modification here. So you know how I was talking about having that, you know, the 14 foot gate and then we're gonna put a man gate? You kind of wonder is why do I put a man gate right next to a big gate when I could just go through the big gate? So we're actually gonna forget that, save an extra post. And when we use that small gate more on the north side of the fence, further down a little bit, some other time. But we're just going to leave the big gate and that's it. Because it just makes sense that way, right? Yeah, hole right there. Right there. You mark your hole. Steve, bud! Come on, you can do it. I know, we've got the TFOS pullers, but... Bradshaw was just gonna do it, so I was like, "All right, cool, we'll do it." That's not gonna I was like, "I was gonna be impressed, <laughs> right, honestly." Eight foot. If you don't want no truth, I've never seen an eight foot post go on the ground. But. There we go. I've never used one of those. Yeah, a, a viewer gave it to us. It's like one of our few gifts. Yeah. Oh, I don't know who I'm not super confident, guys. I'm not super confident. No? This is going to hold like... I don't even know what a comparison would be. Like, we can't even get it to hold inside your... Uh, <laughs> auger by the time you come back out yeah it's a hole digger need some gravel yes yeah, so this is going to be probably a loose one so uh hopefully together they work in tandem and everything works out perfect but uh just a just a crapshoot man here's the ants they're none too pleased none too pleased all right 
Let's finish this thing up, dig it out, and then drop this post Whoa. in there. Look at that. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, we're about 30. 32, 33. We're about 33. Move. Okay. That's straight, right? Come on. It's actually pretty darn good right there. Nice. Okay, somebody got a level. Lewis, your job. Once they get the pin. All right, Clark, you need help in the middle, buddy. You good? Yeah. Level? Clark, you good? I'm good. Okay. You guys can get rid of it. It's right there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, hold on. Okay, there you go. Keep going. All right, how's that look? Oh, they can suck on that one for a while. Look at that. <laughs> now we just gotta get the brace wire. We don't. Right, where? That's gotta be in the. Was the brace wire? Can we reuse that old brace wire? I think we can reuse. This stuff is thicker than what we used to have. Drop over. It's gonna be not pretty, but Bradshaw's got the expertise here. He's a regular splicer. This one's there, this one, right? So is this what you would call standard practice? Is this like normal or is this like just It is normal, but it's also the other word. Just a little just a little you know it's going to work, but it's also not pretty. So then just staple the bejeebers out of it. Yep. We're going to do this. We're going to get really tight down here. Yeah, I think if we were thinking a little bit more, we would have stuck that on before we put mm. the posts in. Yeah, for sure. Because I would love for that to be down further, but there's only so much we can do with so much wire. Got it? Nice. Suck on that piece of trash. It's all uncomfortable to have somebody videoing you, right? <laughs> That's the best part, Lewis. You're gonna have a wife when you get home. Look at that. She think you can fence. Chicks dig people who can hit staples. <laughs> it's like a handyman jack. This is one thing that you're slowly. It's that bending back around you gotta watch. Right here. Stead. And while he's doing this and showing us the way probably not to do this, this whole fence experience has been a, a way of not doing fences. Any of you fence professionals should turn around and turn away, black out the screen, maybe stop watching. This is a uh, farm ingenuity and adaptation to the circumstances kind of demonstration. So it works. It's only like, what, 60 foot run, so it's not gonna be that bad. And yeah, uh, yeah. so we've disturbed an ant pile. We've destroyed some life and created a new life. Created a new H brace. So anyway, all we gotta do is run this barbed wire, and I think we're gonna be done. Cool. Hammer it, get under that, and do the all wiggle and squiggle. Good job, buddy. Okay. Alright, so this is the second one. Found the top. 
Okay. Then wrap that guy. We just roll it around. We don't do the whole like. Right, we just wrap knot, knot. four or five good times. So do you go twice around it like that? Like I like so we go is, like four or five times. No, so on the pole, this is two wraps, right? Yep, yep. so you should do two. That's probably pretty good. Yeah. We've still got all the other T posts tied up yeah. on these others, so we're just getting them tightened to enough that they pull the slack out, but not enough to herculeate over. Okay. So we're just on the second line right here. Right all right, got all seven of them up, seven stapled off. Everything's taunt. We didn't even have to do anything over there since the tree fell on it. We just got all the slack pulled over here. All tied off over here, two to three loops, depending on how much we extra had extra. And all's good. Now, of course, D-Day comes when you figure out what actually is your opening. I don't know. So it's around 14 feet. We'll check that when we get a gate. But otherwise, guys, this goes from the feed pen here where we do it for six and seven and allows us that access to be able to come down here through the truck. And you can see the H brace with the red gate and we can line them up and put them right in there. So as we build everything with our house, I'll give you an update in one of the next few episodes about the house and other things like that. We'll be able to just run them right down this little alleyway here and be able to get them in there. So that way we don't have to disturb them from six. Because obviously when you go from in here and you have to come around, now you're in a big pasture again, you lose them and then you have to regather them to finally get back into here. So obviously that's not what we want to do. One last thing here I want to go over with you guys, but uh, Congrats to the elders for helping us out with this. Made it a lot easier. Strong people. And uh, we'll be seeing them around more, I'm sure. All right, everything's put away. It'll be nice to have that gate put up. We'll catch that in another episode sometime. Um, we're about getting to the point where we need to bring them back over. Cooler weather. We've actually been having some rainstorms, as you heard last episode, but... <clears throat> I mean, we're still in an extreme drought condition even with all that rain, so we could always stand some more. But I wanted to give you guys an update on the salt that we put out there and the Rio Max and how that's been reacting. And uh, so let's just go over here and check this out real quick and see if we can get <clears throat> through some of these moms, but there's only two of them. All right, so the only grass that seems to grow here is right in the seam of the asphalt, if you guys can see it. The grass is kind of starting to make some progress, guys, but it's not a lot. And everything we don't plant grows and everything we do plant dies. All right, so this is obviously, they, they shred this stuff, right? They just throw this stuff everywhere, come back with a rake, put this kind of try and pile it back in. Um, it sucks that they just, they walk through it. You can see them just walking through it, right? That's just wasting money, wasting feed, and it's frustrating on us and every owner, right? And that's why you try and do things to make it so it's efficient, but it doesn't always happen. All right, so we're gonna get a look at the Rio Max. And there it is. <laughs> the Rio Max, all right, how's the salt doing? The salt is over here. So I wanted to give a little bit of an update about where we're at with all this. So generally, if you look on Rio Max's website, actually, I couldn't even find it on the website, it's there somewhere. If you Google the question about high consumption rate Rio Max or something like that, I, I came up to an article that's through their website somewhere. I don't know. There's like three things it says that are reasons for high consumption. One is the fact that there is a salt component to the Rio Max, and so it does have some salt flavoring to it. It's not like they just add tons of salt, but there is salt in it. So if they don't have salt in other places, they will try and consume it out of the Rio Max. 
So the solution to that is add some salt. And that's what we did here with the salt lick. Did it help? Yeah, it did. Our Rio Max was lasting only three days. Now it lasts four days. So, right? So I guess it's helpful, whatever. So they've got some salt. Um, second thing about Rio Max, and it is, they said it is ideal for pet, like a, herds of 30 to 50 or higher that you can start seeing that there's issues with consumption being too high when there's too small of animals. And they say it's something like uh, the surface area per head kind of thing. Like there's just too few of animals and there's too much there to eat. I don't, I don't think that makes sense at all, right? Whatever, that, to me that just is stupid, but whatever. So they said one solution that you could try is putting your Rio Max and put the salt block on top of the Rio Max because then it covers the Rio Max, right? So there's not as much surface area available. You know, I guess go for it, right? I don't know. So to be honest, this whole like surface area thing to me doesn't make sense. And what's even a bigger kick about this, in the summer when consumption rates are high, they tell you to put block of salt on top of it to lessen the surface area to minimize consumption. But in winter, it's like the exact opposite. If you want to encourage it because the brick is harder, it's not as easy to get, so they have to work harder at it, put the block of salt on it to encourage them to come over and continue licking it. So it's kind of that thing, it just engineering mind of mine, just, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't seem to equate. I mean, we added some extra salt, gave us an extra day. So just, just know second reason is if your herd is too small, the surface area for the amount of herd is too large, so they consume it more based on that, something like that. I kind of throw that out with the trash. But third thing is location. So if the location is too close to water or other things, they may have consumption rates. If it's right next to a feed area, which guess what, we're sitting right into a feed area, maybe that could be reasons as well. Um, so it's really a, a trial experiment. We are actually pretty far from the water we could go closer to the water, increase consumption rate, perhaps go farther away to decrease it. If they're always loitering around here, then they might always lick it. It's just like you sit at home and you're on the couch, you're like, nah, 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 nah. I want potato chips, right? And you just go over to the closet and go grab your potato chips, right? Maybe if you were further away from your potato chips, you wouldn't eat them. So that's kind of, I guess, the theory there. And I think there is some truth to that. It's just a really big game. And what makes it harder is seasonal changes Sometimes they don't need the mineral. So is it, hey, this week or two, I noticed that there was a, a decrease or there was an increase. Maybe I should make a change. Maybe they just didn't need any all the time because they had it before. So it gets, it gets kind of tricky. Flat, I guess, lesson learned here is, I think the biggest thing is just when there's a less number of herd, they just eat it more. I don't know, for some reason. And uh, you can put the salt block out, that does help, but it's not like a huge, huge di difference. So anyway. That's the salt thing. Yes, benefit, but uh, the reasons that they give, I don't know. I don't know. So I am thinking about moving this. The problem is, is once I move it, it's then no longer in a shared area. And now I either have to have multiples of these, one for every pasture. But uh, if I put this stuff in like small things, the buffalo just terrorize this stuff and they just, they flip it over, they play with it, they dump it, they waste it, all those kinds of things. And so it's like I want it in these concrete troughs, but these things aren't the simplest things to move. For now, they stay here and it's gonna be here. And that's the story of the salt. So um, I hope I gave you guys an update, at least some closure on that one. We're gonna try and get this hay put back together. Um, consumption rates of hay is a little better, meaning it's a little lower. Could I say that's because of the consumption of Rio Max lasting longer? No, I don't know. I mean, I, you can't say that. But uh, it is a little bit better, but the cooling off of the seasons, less stress, hopefully the buffalo do good. Isn't that such a pretty piece of poo? Isn't it? Looks so nice. So we got the other water trough working here in pasture five. The one in the feed pen broke again and I think it popped off. So we got this one working. We'll fix that other one later. So the buffalo were sitting over here. They're looking good. They're doing good. And we wanted to catch, you know, you guys a glimpse of them. And we've only got a few calves left to turn. So that's the status of the buffalo. Got the water trough fixed. We got, that's the update on the seeds. 
seed salt and real max and we got a gate ready to be put in now we got the fence fixed and everything's looking good so anyway small progress guys hope you enjoyed the episode keep with us as we explore the ranch life <laughs> and build a bison ranch from scratch and eventually we'll do a house so keep with us we're gonna give you an update about what our plans are with that and actually there's a lot of changes coming still right remember that episode there's a lot of changes coming. see ya <laughs>